Nehemiah knew what many didn't know. Life can be pretty ordinary, mundane, and full of routines everywhere we turn. So much so that we find ourselves living without zest or passion for anything. It is because of this lethargy and lukewarmness that we must run to Nehemiah's story in the Bible. Nehemiah is a model of faithfulness and perseverance. He lived far from home, but he never gave up hope that one day he would return. He spent the majority of his life in exile in a pagan land, but his faith and trust in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never wavered. The Words of Nehemiah, Son of Hakaliah Now it happened in the month of Kislu, in the twentieth year of the Persian king, as I was in the capital of Shusha, Hanani, one of my brothers and some men from Judah came, and I asked them about the surviving Jews who had escaped and survived the captivity, and about Jerusalem. They said to me, The remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its fortified gates have been burned, destroyed by fire. Now it came about when I heard these words. I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I was fasting and praying constantly before the God of heaven. Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. He was King Artaxerxes' cupbearer, a position of great power. His reaction to the Jerusalem news demonstrates that he was a spiritual man. Nehemiah had a burden for Judah's remnant. Even though he had not experienced their suffering, he identified with them, foregoing the palace's luxuries in order to fast, mourn, and pray. He confessed their sins as his own and begged God to remember his word and be faithful in regathering his people as he had been just in scattering them. He also asked the Lord to grant him favor in the eyes of the king, as he was hatching a daring plan to help his brethren. He argued his case before the Most High for days. Nehemiah had just gotten the report that his city wall was in ruins, but unlike everyone else who heard this sad turn of events, Born for a few moments, only to move on to other matters, he actually decided to do something definite about this. His passion for God's heritage couldn't be hidden, as he was driven to pray and fast for a change. Thankfully, the genuine, passionate, and heartfelt prayer of this man caught God's attention, because one who was simply a palace servant suddenly received the faith that was sufficient to begin the journey towards the restoration that he longed for. It took about three or four months for Nehemiah's faith to be rewarded in an unexpected way. He was serving wine to the king one day. His face revealed his heartbreak. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 So the king said to me, Why do you look sad when you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of heart. Then I was very frightened, and I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies desolate, and its gates have been consumed by fire? The king's question brought on a wave of fear, for sadness was not allowed in the royal presence. Because eastern monarchs live in constant fear of poison, any sign of agitation in the cupbearer would be regarded as especially suspicious. But Nehemiah had no intention of causing harm to the king. The desolation of Jerusalem, his ancestral home, was the source of his grief. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 The king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. I said to the king, If it pleases the king, And if your servant has found favor in your presence, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, so that I may rebuild it. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 6 to 9 The king, beside whom the queen was sitting, asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I gave him a definite time for my return. 
Then I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the provinces beyond the Euphrates River, so that they will allow me to pass through until I reach Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, so that he will give me timber to construct beams for the gates of the fortress, which is by the temple, and for the city wall, and for the house which I will occupy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of my God was upon me. Then I came to the governors of the provinces beyond the Euphrates River, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent officers of the army and horsemen with me. Ordinarily, a servant wouldn't have the courage to tell his master why he was downcast, but Nehemiah boldly mentioned the problems at home, because he was already consumed with zeal to see God exalted and his people's shame removed. As a result, when true passion is present and we let God take charge, a plethora of possibilities begin to manifest. Apart from the confidence, favor, and protection Nehemiah started to experience as a result of his godly zeal for this project, his people also became very willing to come together as a strong team so as to achieve that excellent result. Remember that the Bible says that people become willing in the day of God's power. In addition to the king's official letters, Artaxerxes dispatched an army escort with Nehemiah, Shortly after arriving in Jerusalem, the new governor surveyed the city under cover of darkness in order to draw as little attention as possible and keep his plans hidden. He knew that repairing the city's walls was critical if the city was to survive. At one point, the rubble was so deep that his mount could not pass through. Later, he gathered the leaders, told them what needed to be done, and encouraged them by recounting how the Lord's hand had been with him thus far, as well as the king's words. The Jews were ecstatic and eager to get started. Even though his work was godly, Nehemiah faced opposition. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10 When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard this, it caused them great displeasure that someone had come to see about the welfare and prosperity of the Israelites. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked us and regarded us with contempt and said, What is this thing you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them, the God of heaven has appointed us for his purpose and will give us success. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no portion, right, or memorial in Jerusalem. Their adversaries, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, mocked them and attempted to halt the construction project by raising the false cry of rebellion against the king. But Nehemiah was unfazed. The God of heaven had promised success. The people were united, which is required if God is to bless them. Psalm chapter 133, verses 1 to 3. A Song of Accents of David Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil of consecration poured on the head, coming down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron coming down upon the edge of his priestly robes, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon coming down on the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. God provided all of the workers required, and construction began. They did, however, have adversaries who wished to halt the rebuilding, but as he had done with Moses, God intervened. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 20 records, Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. This was God's preordained plan to bring his people out of bondage and back into their land to worship in the temple once again. This team of builders who were led by Nehemiah 
was so formidable and unstoppable that even when naysayers rose up to discourage or discredit the work, they refused to stop but became extra confident. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 12 Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. Eventually, the project of building the wall was complete, and the joy of the people was boundless. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15 So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. Passion in God's purpose for our lives will always bring provision, protection, the right relationships, and victory at last. Nehemiah's prayerful dependence upon the Lord was not in vain. Not only did the king give him what he requested, he also made him governor of Judah. Artaxerxes' decree fulfilled the word of the Lord to Daniel. Daniel chapter 9 verse 25 So you are to know and understand that from the issuance of the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the coming of the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Prince, there will be seven weeks of years and sixty-two weeks of years. It will be built again, with a city plaza and moat, even in times of trouble. We can learn valuable lessons about restoring and maintaining a relationship with God from Nehemiah's life. The first order of business when the people returned to the rebuilt city was to ensure that they understood the law of Moses. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 18 records what should be part of every believer's life, the daily reading of God's word. Day after day, from the first day to the last. Nehemiah might have been the poster boy for the philosophy, you never have to recover from a good start, because he exemplifies the importance of initiative in the life of a leader. This godly leader took the initiative to pray for Jerusalem's problem, plan the rebuilding project, persuade the people to act, and pursue the product that everyone desired. And he did it in that particular order. His initiative demonstrated great foresight. When he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were in shambles, Nehemiah could not imagine sitting still. He had to take action. Complacency should be at the top of a leader's list of things to fear. But what enables good leaders to take the initiative? Nehemiah demonstrates that leaders have a feeling in their heart or gut that prompts them to act. They do not know everything, but they are knowledgeable enough to act. Nehemiah had knowledge in the following areas. Number one, he knew how long the project would take. Nehemiah gave King Artaxerxes a definite time period for his absence. Number two, he knew how to get there. Nehemiah asked for letters of permission to pass through the provinces beyond the river to Judah. Number three, he knew what he would need to get the job done. Nehemiah requested timbers from Asaph to make beams and gates for the wall. Number four, he knew that God's hand was upon him. Nehemiah got all that he requested because the hand of God rested on him. Qualities of Initiators Nehemiah displayed the qualities that make for initiative in leaders. Number one, they know what they want. All accomplishments begin with a desire. Nehemiah was certain that he wanted the wall to be rebuilt. Number two, they pushed themselves to act. Nehemiah began by acting alone. He pushed for the information that would persuade others. Number three, they take more risks. Nehemiah took some significant risks in obtaining permission to go, get wood, and survey the job. Number four, they make more mistakes. Nehemiah was not afraid to enlist men who were not professional builders or soldiers to help him build and fight. Number five, they go with their gut. What Nehemiah lacked in experience, he made up for with the passion of his heart. The prophet Nehemiah serves as an excellent model for modern-day leaders. 
Nehemiah receives permission from the king he was serving to go help his people after learning of their plight. Despite obstacles and opposition, he recognizes a difficult vision and leads the people in achieving it. Nehemiah was constantly asking God for a vision. He realized that a true vision could only come from God. It must be a divinely inspired and revealed vision. Only such a vision is fit for a leader. While Nehemiah was a leader who articulated the visions first, the people confirmed it and committed to the task. To realize the vision, everyone's gifts were needed. It was not easy to realize the vision. Faithfulness was made difficult by divisions and hard feelings, as well as outside opposition. Nonetheless, Nehemiah and the people persisted faithfully, if not perfectly. The following are some leadership lessons we can take from Nehemiah's example. First, God's leader responds to a call. God has always called leaders. Leaders must hear God's calling to lead and respond to that call. Nehemiah understands his leadership as a calling from God. Nehemiah listened and came to see the need. Secondly, God's leader cares for the people and their situation. Nehemiah listened to the voice of the people. He showed care for their situation. Nehemiah identified with the people. He thought in terms of we and us. He came to understand and identify with the trouble we are in. Why look to Nehemiah for lessons? God's leader contributes to defining the situation's reality. You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned, Nehemiah said, not describing his personal agenda, but assessing the common situation faced by all the people. Progress is impossible unless the reality is accurately described. Nothing is more limiting to a group, says Peter Senge, than the inability to talk about the truth. Secondly, God's direction and vision are pursued by the leader and people. Nehemiah was constantly asking God to provide a vision for him. He comprehended that a true vision must come from God. It must be a God-inspired and God-revealed vision. Only such a vision is worthy of leadership. The vision must be what God has put into my heart. The vision appeared in the midst of a disastrous situation. It would have been easier to give up in despair. But even in difficult times, God's leader seeks God's vision. We also see that prayer is essential to know God's will. Prayer is the fundamental act of God's people. God's leaders and people must be in the right place at the right time to hear God's voice. God can speak to us at any time, but it is more difficult for God's vision to reach our hearts if we are not turning our hearts toward God to seek God's guidance. The prophet Habakkuk ascended the tower, convinced that God had a vision for him and his people. Habakkuk was willing to wait for the vision, but he knew he had to prepare himself to receive it. We also see God's leader building a team. Nehemiah gained the conviction of the people. This enabled him to assemble a team capable of carrying out the vision. People shared responsibility for reaching the goal. This vision could not be realized by one person, not even Nehemiah. Nehemiah began with a small group, then expanded it to include nearly everyone. The people pledged to work for the common good. People's talents were identified and utilized. Various people worked on various sections of the wall. People were assigned to jobs near their homes. But even God's people get fatigued. They felt the job was taking too much time and was too demanding. There were internal disputes, and someone said, Everything looks like failure in the middle. But Nehemiah was able to find ways to alleviate their concerns without losing the vision. God's leader keeps the real purpose before the people. It is easy for people to forget the purpose behind the vision, even as they work to fulfill it. The vision was to rebuild the wall, but the wall 
was not an essential part of the vision. The wall was a means to a larger purpose. Nehemiah and his people were really about reclaiming their identity as people of faith. What was at stake was not just the wall, but indeed their very faith. Nehemiah had to make sure that people were reminded of their ancient faith. Because their task was tied to a larger objective, they put their hearts into their work and completed the job in 52 days. What an impressive feat this was. They were mocked and ridiculed as they rebuilt the wall. Their adversaries did everything they could to discourage them. They threatened to spread false information about Nehemiah. Nehemiah listened intently, but persisted. Nehemiah was aware that he was doing great work and could not descend from the wall to debate with the enemies. Even when faced with adversity, Nehemiah persisted. When trouble strikes, God's people must not give up. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for stirring my passion and zeal today so that I can run my race to the end. I am grateful for your presence that makes the difference in this journey, just like you did for Nehemiah. I ask in the name of Jesus for your favor, covering, and triumph will manifest as I choose a life of zeal instead of lethargy. Amen.